Hey there. So, you want to start your own women in science bookshelves and you want to know where to start? Well, I uh, got you covered. We're going to start with the basics. These are like the books that everybody needs to have, no matter kind of what part of women in science you're interested in, what field. Uh, so, it used to be the case that uh, everybody needed just the green book, what we call them is the green book, uh, which was Marilyn Ogilvie's Women in Science, uh, which was a nice kind of um, just short encyclopedic sort of entries on women in science. And for years and years, that was kind of the most easily available book that did that sort of thing. And then she went and produced what we now call the Bug Squashers, which are these two books, which is the Biographical Dictionary of Women in Science, um, A through Z. Uh, and this is pretty much where you start. Uh, you get yourself a couple of these guys and what they're good at um, is if you have somebody who's born sort of before the 1930s, um, they're likely going to be in here. And what these books are really good for is sort of nailing down when they were at the different institutions they worked at. They do a lot, did a lot of like deep research into like, these were the years they were at Cornell. These were the years they were at... Um, you know, McGill. Uh, and uh, it's really good for that. You check in, like, I'd say one out of every 50 dates is, like, wrong by one year or so. So you got to be careful with that if you're using them for research purposes. Do double check. But uh, in terms of just getting the chronology down, the basic rough chronology, uh, they're really invaluable. And then they have, like, you know, a two paragraphs to a page worth of material about each person, uh, which is also good as kind of getting a rough idea of uh, what this person was about. Um, then the other thing that you often do is you say, okay, well, now I know what they're about. Um, I kind of want to get into their, uh, their background a little bit. And that's where you get the ladies in the laboratory books. Um, so these two guys, uh, there's a third one too. Where'd that go? Anyway, um, so these are by Mary Kreese, uh, and they're really good for figuring out, well, like, what generally was the position of women in this part of the world at this particular time? Uh, how many of them were in university? How many of them had this level position? Uh, just getting an orientation for how unusual the person that you're interested in was, uh, what kind of resources they had at their disposal, what kind of mentorship they had access to. Uh, these books are really good for that. Um, and just, just great, uh, for just the history of science in general. Um, what, what was it like to be a woman in France in 1842, uh, who was interested in pursuing a career in biology versus the social sciences? These are just gold mines for those sorts of things. Um, similarly, uh, Margaret Rossiter's books on women scientists in America, uh, there are other volumes. My volume one is all I could find. I, when I, I don't know. There are so many books that I know I have that just aren't here when I did the cleaning. Anyway, uh, this is this is a similar thing that goes into just really microscopic detail uh, about um, different areas in America in different eras. Uh, what was the with, you know, what different majors were, were women picking up? Uh, how successfully did they move from those majors into professions? Um, you know, what were the laws on the books in different places? So yeah, these guys, again, uh, there's, there's, uh, this one's just covering before 1940, I think. Yep. Uh, and then the other volumes, uh, take you up to, I think, 1980, maybe 90. Don't remember. It would help if I had it. Uh, but it has disappeared. Uh, now, old school. Uh, so these, you know, a lot of these books are good and uh, for, for these people that have stayed within the consciousness. Um, but you have a lot of figures who just have faded away. Uh, people who were very uh, well known a hundred years ago, uh, but that now you look on their internet, uh, you know, you look on the internet for them, and it's just a find a grave. Uh, and that's the only link to the fact that they ever lived. Uh, so, you know, that's why I like having a good supply of the old school uh, founders of women in science history. Uh, of course, Edna Yost is, is the big one in that. 
Uh, and if you just pick up any of hers, this is her American Women in Science. Uh, she has volumes on nursing and modern science and all kinds of cool stuff. Um, but there are figures in here that are, you know, were very big when she started writing these, which was in the 40s, essentially. Uh, and it have just gone away. And if you want to write about and kind of bring those figures back to people, which is kind of my main interest in, in these things, is making sure that people don't get forgotten, um... These books, her books, are great for that. Uh, she was one of the only people doing it at the time, so all of them, just get them all. Uh, they're not expensive. Um, if you want to get outside of the English tradition a little bit, um, Strohmeyer, uh, her lexicon, uh, is a pretty good one. Uh, again, it's kind of the... Um, I mean, it has, you know, regular, uh, regular, it has English figures in it, uh, so American and, and, and British figures, but it also has a good smattering of, um, German, French, Russian figures who you wouldn't get otherwise in some of the other ones. Again, it's like a paragraph or two each, but it's a good starting point for working your way outside of the, the English tradition, and the German's not, not too bad. Um, my German is not great, but I can still read it just fine. Um... Uh, Winnie Warren, uh, this book, uh, again, for a very long time, um, books about sort of minorities in science and minority women in science were very hard to come by. So for a long time, uh, Winnie Warren's book, uh, was sort of what you had. Uh, it was your major source, uh, for just general, um, history of black women in science, um, there are other more specialty volumes about black women in chemistry that are really good. Um, but this is kind of, um, again, a good starting point for that. And so no matter what field you're in, if you're kind of interested in, in the mid 19th to mid 20th centuries, who did what, uh, who was around, um, you know, how difficult was their journey? It's a really good one. Um, then, my fi no, I'm not going to say my favorites, but I love these books. They're the biobibliographic source books, uh, and they don't exist for every topic. Uh, there's one for mathematics, there's one for psych, there's one for bio, um, and they are these volumes that kind of, uh, they move a little bit closer. You get people here who are doing their work in like, you know, the 70s, uh, 70s and 80s, and it's always, um, here's what their lives were, Here's what their work was about, uh, and here's a really juicy bibliography of places you can go to learn more about them. Uh, and, you know, it's fig filled with, you know, 40, 50 kind of figures, uh, the most important people in each field. So it's really handy uh, for that kind of stuff. I will say that if you're not familiar with the, the topic, um, the explanation of, like, here's what their work was about... Um, it's not written for like now we're going to introduce you from the from the ground up it's it's written like hey you you have good familiarity with for instance the mathematics uh here we're going to talk talk about it um and we're not going to go into too much teaching you from the ground up um that's less important in like psych uh where a lot of the ideas are much more approachable but for the math volume it might be a little bit intimidating or exciting depending on how you look at it um so yeah i i love these guys i go to them all the time um and then uh let's say um you're, you're trying to find stuff about, a, especially in Britain, uh, a lot of figures in there. Uh, what the Royal Society is always very good at is, not always, I'll say. There have been some really glaring omissions uh, on this front. But uh, when one of uh, the fellows dies, uh, the production of obituary... Uh, obituary. That pronunciation went sideways. Uh, obituaries uh, on them with some detail about their life, a good amount of detail about their work. Uh, so when you ever get the, the biographical memoirs of the Fellows of the Royal Society, um, you know, pretty much any year that you choose, uh, there's going to be three or four in-depth analyses of those people. Some of these have been converted, and you can find them on, like, JSTOR and stuff, but a lot of them haven't, uh, and this is kind of the place that you can find them. Um, so, yeah, sometimes that's what you gotta do. 
uh, is just figure out, okay, when did they die? What was the Royal Society publication for that year? And you just hunt it down, or you just get them all. Um, they're not terribly expensive, uh, but you just kind of got to be patient. Um, so those are some like, hey, there, there are plenty of other sort of, um, you know, general history of women in science books, um, you know, things like Headstrong or, or, uh, you know, the, the Marie Curie, Marie Curie complex or something like that. Um, but these are the ones that I find myself just always starting with whenever I'm with a character, uh, and I don't know anything about them necessarily, or I only kind of know roughly what they did. That's kind of the order that I work up through in my general books to get my my pillow uh, that I build up out of. Uh, and then from there, I kind of go to the more specialist volumes, which we'll talk about later. But if you get like those 10 books, you're going to be pretty well set uh, as, as a starting point. And then you get to get the specialist volumes, which we'll talk about later. Okay, happy shopping, uh, and we'll see you later. Bye.